Our meeting tonight is now open for the sharing of testimonies of healing through Christian science. Jeremy. During this past Sunday's broadcast, there was an issue that prevented the sound from our service being sent out to the teleconference. My testimony tonight is about all the blessings that came from this. I am so grateful that the in-town church members were ready to read as needed. And I'm grateful that it happened on a Sunday so it didn't affect anyone giving testimonies from out of town. And then I'm so grateful for all I have learned here and for practitioner support all these years because I, I wasn't freaked out by this and it didn't take, I didn't take any part of it personally. I knew it was opposition to God's word getting out. And I knew that nothing exists that can stop God from expressing himself through all of us. After the service, I went about my normal business. I knew that the answer would come, and I also knew from past experience that worrying about it wouldn't help at all. And whenever those thoughts of worry or that it was my fault came to me, I gave them a hearty, get thee behind me and move forward. On Monday, I came to the church with new wires and examined each part of the process. None of that worked, and still I trusted that God would let me know what needed to happen. Yesterday I came back to the church with different computers and other equipment that I used for the remote broadcast, and piece by piece replaced everything that could have affected the issue, testing along the way. When I was done, everything here was different, and yet the issue remained. At this point, I just had to laugh, and I said, all right, Father, obviously I'm not seeing something here. At that point, I got this thought to try something stupid, something that had no bearing on the issue at all. I remember that last year, the teleconference company we use added the ability to have video calls. And when that happened, I blocked the camera through the browser settings, and all this time, it's been fine. So I unblocked the teleconference access to the camera and immediately the sound started broadcasting. I asked a few church members to call in to test and sure enough it was working. I put the whole system back the way it, wa way it was and it still it worked. I thanked God and had another good laugh. I was expecting error to make sense and of course it doesn't ever make sense. I'm very grateful for the work of my practitioner during this time and for the past seven years. All this has proved to me how much I have changed during my time here. To not take this personally, to not spend every moment worrying, to truly trust that God will guide me through this. It's amazing what learning to live this science has done for me. I'm so grateful to be a member of this church and to be here tonight. Thank you. And now I have a testimony from Diana, 14. Hi, this is Diana from Berlin and Vienna. I'm in Berlin now, and I would like to express my gratitude for the last couple of weeks of roundtables and Bible studies. I have really gotten a lot of help from those um, discussions about how to handle animal magnetism, especially now at this time, with so much of this coming out to be healed. And I am so grateful that we are seeing so much progress in the way of transformation, in the way of so much of this um, this divide in our country and in the world, uh, the fear in our country and in the world, um, and the violence and all the things that come with that fear just being dissolved through so much resistance. But it is changing and it is healing and it is so exciting and heartening to see and I'm so grateful to have the watches that we do together 
And I'm so grateful to have the support that all of you do day in and day out, week in and week out. And I'm so grateful that for that support from the Plainfield Church. And I, I just want to express my gratitude and thank you all for um, everything that I know you're contributing to. I know we are all contributing to the this movement that is is just shifting um, the future of the world. And I'm so grateful that I'm a part of this movement, this church that is doing so much good work, so much important work fighting the good fight. Um, I'm just so grateful that I've found you and that I've been part of this family at this time. It is so wonderful, and I'm sure I'm not the only one who is listening out there who feels the same way, and I just, I just want to express so much gratitude. Thank you so much. Thank you. Dave from Florida. Yeah, hi. Um, last November, I gave a testimony about how a very disgruntled member of our community came up to me in public and just started yelling at me and was very nasty about an issue. That testimony was about how I had asked for help because I was in a seething rage about the whole thing. The help was, of course, effective, and I calmed down. Over the past few months, it became clear that I still needed to be healed of an intense dislike of this guy, and that wasn't good at all. So every time I thought of him, I just knew that he was an idea of God. I worked on seeing him right and also seeing him see me right. The other day, we were outside talking to his neighbor. He saw us and came over and joined the conversation. He was completely pleasant, and it was like nothing had ever happened. I was very grateful for this and to know that we can apply Christian science and the power of prayer to any situation especially our world situation, and it will heal it. I'm grateful to be a member of this church, for Christian Science, for the healing practitioners, and thank you for those readings. Thank you. Pam, Virginia. Pam from Virginia. Go ahead, go ahead. I want to say how grateful I am to be a member of this church. Recently, I've had a real challenge in my metaphysical work to unsee personality due to recent events which have occurred in our dear city. However, putting that aside, I have been doing much prayerful work to see that all of God's children are not and cannot be under the influence of hypnotism and that the evil influence is destroyed, that God's government prevails with peace, justice, love, and harmony. The roundtable discussion for Sunday, June 14th, entitled Dismantle the Hypnosis Machine, has been an immeasurable help with this issue. I have listened to it over and over, especially when Mrs. Singletary relates of the dream she had that clearly showed to her how hypnotism had had its way with the whole world in the past few months. It enabled me to actually understand how subtle and aggressive it can really be, and I have thought about this a great deal in the past few days, and to make sure that I am not allowing myself to come under this influence, especially with news, talk, and so forth. I have worked to keep myself close to God in my treatments and prayers, and to know that the work we are all doing has a healing effect. I am so grateful for the wonderful and dedicated practitioners in this church and for the unity expressed here. It is so helpful and encouraging when we know that we are all working together to do God's work. Thank you, Amanda, for your supportive readings. I am so grateful for all the testimonies we will be hearing this evening. Much love and gratitude to all of you. Good evening. Thank you. Jim. Jim from Arizona. Go ahead, please. Good evening. 
Last night, as I was about to retire, I realized I could not use my right leg properly. It was responding as if my ankle was sprained. I hadn't done nothing that would have done cause this condition. This morning, there was no improvement. So I mentioned it to my practitioner, who immediately reminded me of a number of truths to think about. I began my daily study of our weekly lesson, and when I got up to change my activity, there was not a trace of a sprained ankle. I am most rap- gratitude for this rapid healing, and I am most grateful. Thank you. Thank you. Shardell, go ahead, please. Good evening. Thank you for the healing music and for the wonderful readings. I am so grateful for my practitioner's prayers and all the things I am learning about Christian science as taught by Mrs. Eddy and her students. Suddenly, after many months of silence, a close family member contacted me, and not only did we have a happy conversation, which included gratitude for past financial and personal support, but also information about helping me with a project that I have been dealing with. This event occurred due to Christian science and understanding something of God's plan for all his children. The things mentioned at the round table on June 14th explain what took place. Here is a loose quote from the round table. Quote, separate error from person. Love, love, love. Error is like a cloud overhead. Leave person alone as a child of God. And that is exactly what I have been doing for these many months. I blessed and loved every single day, oftentimes more than once. And I love the Bible quote from Numbers 6, 24. The Lord bless thee and keep thee, The Lord make his face to shine upon thee, and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee, and give thee peace. And I would add, and give thee health, and give thee strength and joy. I am very grateful for this healing, and my cup overfloweth. Thank you. Thank you. Luann from New York. Go ahead, please. Thank you. I just want to say how grateful I am for this church and for the life God has given me. Our God is a merciful, loving God who cares deeply for each and every one of his children. I didn't always believe that. As a child, I was sure God didn't care about me at all. Night after night, my prayers went unanswered, and I wondered what kind of God would allow so much suffering. I was not impressed with this far-off God I was taught about in church school. I had so many questions and was rightly confused. Then a few years ago, God led me to call a practitioner from this church. I came at her with such certainty that I am the child of an alcoholic. I am abused. I am angry. I was taught over the years that I am not this I am. I was brought out of that mindset, and everything in my life began to change. I was taught that I am the daughter of the king, and shown why that is true. I was given the tools which, when used, opened my eyes to the truth of my being, untouched, unashamed. Mrs. Eddy says in Science and Health that man is not material, he is spiritual. This I now know. I am that I am. I am so deeply grateful for my practitioner's strength and understanding, enabling me to overcome this awful way of thinking. Thank you. Thank you. Bruce. Recently, it was suggested that we read the article that's on our front page of our website. It's called God's Nearness by Mary Baker Eddy. 
And one of the statements that's in this article is where Mrs. Eddy says, everything that comes to me today brings me a blessing. I can remember a number of years ago when I read this for the first time, and my first impression was, what a lovely thought to think about. But then I stopped there and I says, well, this is more than just a lovely thought to think about. This is like a rule for what's governing our experience. What happens if something untoward comes into our experience? Does it bring a blessing too? And the answer is really, yes, it does. And after I uh, thought that, I was working with a group of guys and all of a sudden one of the other guys started bad-mouthing somebody else and then started laughing about it. And I'm thinking like, all right, well I can either really come hard down on this guy or I could have some compassion on him and help him out of this error. So I went up to him, I says, I heard you saying such and such about him and he looked at me and says, and you want me to stop? And I said, well, my primary concern is how well you can work along with others and cooperate with them and be a, a contributing part of this team. You know, what's going to happen if you work with someone that you think is least favorable? Do you think you can make something good out of it? And I says, I'd really like to see you make a positive contribution to the teamwork here with this group because you know that's going to make everything go better for everyone. And he looked at me and he thanked me. And he says, yes, you're right. And I won't do that anymore. And he didn't. And he proved to be a very valuable part of the team after that and did some really great things. So I'm very grateful for this statement from Mary Baker Eddy. Everything that comes to me today brings me a blessing. And this is the rule for each and every one of us in our day and experience. Thank you. Betty from California. Go ahead, please. please. Good evening. Um, thank you for the readings tonight. Uh, I wish to express my gratitude for being healed um, of breaking out into hives. This happened a, a number of years. This would happen one or two times a year, maybe more. Uh, and when this issue began, I would get help from a Plainfield practitioner, and uh, they would go away after several days. Gradually, I noticed that before I broke out, there was a tell, as they say. I would notice an itch in a certain spot, and if I was aware and on guard, I would declare against it immediately and very strongly, and it would not even start. The episodes grew much less frequent until I realized one day that I was healed. Looking back, I saw that these episodes would happen when my thought was very disturbed. Only Christian science and practitioner help were able to heal this and teach me to be aware and not let this creep in and also to get my thought back to God and to be very careful about not letting my thought be disturbed. I'm very grateful to be a member of this church for practitioner help and for Christian science. And I'm very happy to be here tonight. Thank you. Linda. Thank you very much for the readings tonight and the beautiful music. I'd like to express my gratitude for the lessons I have been learning about gratitude and happiness, which is found only in God, since participating at this church. I was reminded the other day of a long-standing habit I had of being drawn to very sad music. Listening to it would make it difficult to shake off negative thoughts and memories. This rumination would continue the cycle of gloom and keep me focused on what I thought was wrong at the time. It would cause anxious and inward feelings. Since coming here, and working regularly with a painful practitioner, my thoughts have been shifting away from this morbid attitude and replacing it with a focus on God, gratitude, and now when tempted to dwell on the negative and rehearse problems or worry about injustice or focus on the past, 
I have been given practical actions I can take instead. For example, I can be proactive by filling my thought with the Word of God, write prayer watches, listen to songs of praise, pray for others, look for good around me, and be grateful. And the list can go on, and we get all these wonderful tools from all the classes and our practitioners here. And far from ignoring problems, it has helped me overcome adversity, face fear, gain moral courage, heal old wounds, has given me peace, hope, joy, and purpose. This has opened my heart to see God work in my life. Mrs. Eddy instructs us on page 10 of the book Christian Healing in Roseburg's quote, If you wish to be happy, argue with yourself on the side of happiness. Take the side you wish to carry. End quote. I'm so grateful to be here and learning how to argue on the side of happiness with the understa new understanding of God and the correct teachings of Christian science. Thank you. Thank you. Gary. I'm so grateful to be uh, learning here that uh, God really looks out for us in, in, in every part of our life um, if, we, if we let him. I had an experience a few years ago I'd like to relate. Um, my business partner and I were, uh, had an opportunity to make a, 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 a major change in our business uh, that we would like, we wanted to do. Um, in fact, I mean, we, an opportunity to sell our business, which would uh, be a major change in our lives, but it was also make a major change uh, in uh, to our clients as well. And it was something that we were very concerned about. And when we told our largest and most important client about it, he was very concerned and wanted to have a meeting right away. So we scheduled the meeting and in thinking about it and preparing for it, I was trying to think of all the things I could say to him that, uh, to encourage him that this change would be okay for him. And I was going around and around trying to come up with all kinds of ideas. <clears throat> and then uh, suddenly I remembered something that a Christian science practitioner had told me uh, shortly before that, uh, about another situation that came to, that just popped right in because it seemed perfectly appropriate. And what uh, this practitioner had told me was, remember to see that there is only one mind governing everyone in the situation, not many minds working at cross purposes or trying to persuade one another or trying to, you know, but one mind. And the government of that mind is always harmonious for all of his creation. Well, I realized that I was going about this all wrong. <laughs> and uh, I was I needed, I needed to put the whole situation in God's hands. And I realized that, well, if this client's concerns were founded, were justifiable, then God would provide an answer for all of us that would be beneficial for all of us. And if this client's concerns were not founded, then he would realize that and everything would be okay. And with that, uh, I stopped worrying about it. And I stopped fiddling around with it. Well, and when the meeting came place, I took place, I was perfectly at peace about the whole thing. And uh, the client asked a couple of questions and we answered the questions and after that, he seemed happy. Uh, and at the end of the meeting, he was very happy for us as well about the whole situation. And uh, 
That was a few years ago, and he has been very happy about it ever since then. So I'm grateful to see God at work in this matter. Uh, I'm grateful for the help I received from the practitioner. And I'm grateful for Christian science, for Mary Baker Eddy giving us the science of Christianity, which, which helps us listen for God's uh, will that is always a blessing for every situation. And I'm so grateful to be here tonight. Thank you. Florence from Georgia. Go ahead, please. Thank you. Thank you, Amanda, for the healing message tonight. I have three testimonies. And the first one is from California. He says, years ago at 19 years old, living in Arizona, working night shift at a country club hotel, one day my car was being serviced. So I asked my co-workers for a ride that night. The cook, a co-worker, offered to drive me home from work. But instead of driving me home that night, my co-worker took me out in the middle of the desert to rape me. I found myself telling him everything I learned at Sunday school, and he actually sat and listened in amazement. I remember telling him that our father, mother, God, was holding us in the palm of his hand, and I held my cupped hands up to his face to show him. Just then I saw a, the headlights of an oncoming car, and right then I made a move as though I was about to throw up, and he let go of my hair, and I jumped out and flagged down the car. It was a nice couple who said that they decided to take a shortcut through the desert at the last moment, and I told them what had happened, and they safely drove me home. After this incident, the cook never showed up for work again. Two thoughts make me clearly aware of God's presence at all times with this incident. First, what prompted me to, with that move, as though I was about to throw up, which had this guy let me go? What made the couple change direction that night and come my way to rescue me? These thoughts make me more aware of how present God is with us at all times to protect us. And thanks to the God Our Preserver lesson writer for reminding me of this experience which glorifies God as our preserver. The second is from Germany. Three years ago, my son and I lived in a valley and he and his friend rode their bikes to and from school uphill. One day, it was raining. They had just left school and were on their way on a dirt road beside the main street. My son flew off into a curve and slid into a guardrail. He was safe but shaken and had a cut bleeding beside his eye. His friend walked him back to school where I worked. My son was crying and arguing with his friend while I cleaned his face because his friend said that he was riding too fast and did not really use his brakes. His friend then went home. I kept calm and reassured my son with some comforting truth as I cleaned his face. The suggestion came that he needs stitches. I told myself that there are no accidents in mind, but I knew I had to keep praying. By the time we got home, my son had forgotten everything because he immediately wanted to go to visit the same friend and play with him. I continued to pray and to remind myself that since there are no accidents in God's kingdom, his creation can also have no accidents, therefore nothing could have happened to my son, and that he was always God's untouched child, always safe and well. I also felt to pray 
that God is in control in the children's relationship and that none of them could feel prideful in how they rode their bikes and also that there are no mistakes in God's kingdom. I felt calm, satisfied, and free. The next morning when we got up, the skin on my son's eye was completely clean, no scab and no scar. I am so grateful for this healing, grateful that God led me to Christian science, and I'm really thankful for the Plainfield practitioner's help. And then this one is from Canada. Thank you, Plainfield, for all you are doing to spread the truth of the gospel to the world. The variety of readings, articles, music that you have made available to teach us the way in Christian science, as Mrs. Eddy intended, serve as a quiet, holy invitation to come into the presence of God and get to know him better and to help us grow closer to him day by day. And so we are equipped to further our work for God by being obedient to God's commandments. In preparing to do my individual watch one evening, I was led to work on the issue of young people being attracted to spirit boards. Apparently it is a board game that draws attention to the occult spiritualism. As I was preparing for the watch, I, was, I went to the website and under the archived roundtable section, I was immediately directed to an October 2016 roundtable, the theme of which was Satan's Lies. The discussion and ideas in this roundtable were very helpful in strengthening my watch to see and to know that our youth are not drawn into such indulgences because God did not lead them there and therefore they will not go astray. We hold to the truth for our children and all children. I'm very grateful for all that I'm learning through the wonderful teachings. Thank you very much. I'm also very grateful tonight for those powerful readings. They are so reassuring what Isaiah says. I love the part that says that you are mine. I often think about that and what it really implies. If I am his, then I am in his hands. I am forever with him. And many of Mrs. Eddy's writings tell us that we should never forget our unity with God because that is what helps us know who we are and therefore not be bullied by all the suggestions, the wrong thoughts, the, su- the evil thoughts that come. We are nothing. You are this. You are the, all of that. It takes care of it. We are his and nothing can take us out of his hands. I'm very grateful for Christian science, how it explains who we are. Very grateful for all the testimonies which glorify God. I'm very happy to be here tonight. Excuse me. Thank you. <clears throat> Mary. Mary. I have a couple of um, comments on our website bulletin board. The first from Wisconsin. Uh, thank you for the wonderful and pertinent testimony meeting readings on Wednesday, June 10th, with the theme of God hath made of one blood all nations of men. They were so inspiring, I wanted to find out more of the story of Cornelius and Simon and opened Acts 10 to read the entire story. And then California. Thank you to everyone for this past round table. I very much enjoyed and learned from listening. Learned more about staying close to love. And someone new in California. Thank you, Plainfield workers, for all the Bible studies, roundtable discussions, testimonies, your website, online access to the service meetings, your dedication to Christian science. Much gratitude for you all, or as my Southern friends might say, for you all. (laughs) And uh, 
And she said, I feel like a weary traveler having found an oasis of hope. And she wanted to give this testimony. Um, I will paraphrase it. She, she had to make an appointment and um, because of some balance problems, she uses a walker and she went to somewhere new which she'd never been before and she found herself quite far from where she needed to be and also with a daunting um, steps to climb, a staircase that she had to climb and she thought she was just going to have to go back and, and miss her appointment. But then she said out of nowhere, uh, a young man appeared in an otherwise deserted area and he was taking no heed about the pandemic or keeping six feet apart and he um, came over and asked how he could help her and he, he did help her. He found, it, found a new route to get to her appointment and then not only that, he stayed and waited with her until the appointment was over and then brought her back to where she needed to be. And she just said it was such a wonderful demonstration of God's love. She was so grateful for that. And then another, someone new from Massachusetts. Each morning I awake to a world more bright, just knowing that the Plainfield Church Independent, the lovely practitioners, a church family, a community working together as one, furthering the cause of Mary Baker Eddy, is right here. What more could I ask? The dedication and work that goes into the Plainfield Christian Science Church Independent is totally amazing. Whatever is needed is right here at the touch of a button. Ten months ago, I was blessed by losing a job that I care so cared for and loved. Little did I know that another job was unfolding with more gifts than I can even imagine. A decision was made to really deeply, intently study Christian science using the general generally used edition of Science and Health. I worked day and night for eight months, learning, understanding, and growing. However, even with the intensity, something seemed amiss. I seemed I was going nowhere. I prayed and continued to pray, and yes, also study. Reading another, another's website, who, who is a Christian science teacher, I found in the comment section a Referral to your website. Oh, how the light did shine as I poured through much of the material prepared for all those to, you, to use to support and to know the real Christ scientist. Gratitude sings from my every pore. My heart smiles so big in moments it feels like it will break wide open with jubilation. The restoral of what is rings through as divine sweet grace. I have never known this much, much joy existed. It is everywhere. And yet I had not found it until reading, studying, and praying about all the gifts received through the Plainfield Christian Science Church. I am beyond, I am sure beyond measure. This is how it was for those surrounding Mrs. Eddy. Gratitude and joy unsurpassed. I am so very, very grateful. Here I am, Lord. Thank you all for being there. Those were such beautiful readings tonight. Something we needed to hear about the loving kindness of our Father. I loved where you read, Mrs. Eddy said, I worship that of which I can conceive first as a loving father and mother, and then as thought ascends a scale of being to a diviner consciousness. God becomes to me as to the apostle who declared it, God is love, divine principle, which I worship. It's so beautiful. She, we all must worship God in, in ways that, in which we can understand. He mustn't be this far off thing somewhere out there, um, but something close as a father, mother, that is certainly what he is as a, as a, refuge from the storm. Whatever is needed in our experience, God becomes to us when we reach out to him. We need wisdom, he is wisdom. When we need comfort, he is comfort. When we, when we need love, he is love. I read a most beautiful article about Mrs. Eddy and living in Pleasant View. 
and her great love for flowers. Um, most of you might know that the house, she picked Pleasant View. She, she drove by it one day and saw the sun shining over it. And it was an old farmhouse, and she just loved it and decided that she was to live there someday. And there was great renovations that went on, um, and she loved that place. She was a farm girl herself, and this, this was a beautiful place. She had cows and other things, and mainly she had beautiful gardens and flowers. She loved flowers, and she said that every home should have beautiful yards like that. And she pointed out... She told someone that flowers were just an expression of God's goodness. And then she said that there was a special kind of a cactus growing out in her yard. And um, it only bloomed once a year at night, around 9 o'clock. And so one August night, she invited all the people in her home, all the workers, to go out and, and watch this little cactus flower. And certainly, right about 9 o'clock, this little flower opened up. It said, in, in fairy-like beauty, it just unfolded. And uh, everyone was there to watch it. And you could just tell her delight, and also the delight of...